better daily. When we work hard in our minds, bodies, and our spirits to become 1% better every single day. Download the app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live to catch the video version of these podcasts. Here's your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What is up, Betterment family? This is Thursday. Happy Thursday. It is Word Thursday, and I, your host, Alex Van Houten, am going to go through and unpack a word. We've done courage. We've done unity. We've done integrity. And today, we're going to take some time to focus on the word love. Now, I have to, as a precursor, say none of these are... These, these short casts, these 7 to 15 minute meditations on these words on Word Thursday, none of these are all encompassing. You know, some of these words are way deeper than others. And love is one of those words. So we might have to do this in several parts. But this comes out of a conversation that I recently had as an interview on a podcast. It won't even be released until January. So I can't share the link for you guys underneath. But it was an awesome interview. And the host asked me why I thought, given that everybody knows health is important, or at least to an extent, people know that exercise and nutrition and good lifestyles, those things are important. But the ultimate question really is, why don't we do these things? Why don't we make time for them? And, you know, throughout the podcast, I had spent time developing uh, what I believe is a more powerful story about exercise and nutrition. And you guys here in Better Daily know that story, that your exercise is more than calories out and your nutrition is more than calories in. There's a lot more to it. And I unpacked that science for the podcast. And then when he asked why we don't do it, you know, there are so many things that I've said in the past when folks ask why this is difficult for us. It could be things related to behavior change. It could be things related to our development of a good vision. It could be things related to time and and priorities and whatnot. But what came out yesterday in that interview was interesting to me, and I wanted to share it with you. And that's that's why we're unpacking this word love. It flashed through my head what Jesus said about the commandments that are are the most important. There's there's the scene in the New Testament where somebody asks, what are the greatest commandments? And he says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, on these hang the law and the prophets. Within these commandments are the law and the prophets. And so he sums up the whole law in these things. And in Christianity, it's it's very common that we will say that it's important to love your neighbor as yourself. And that means something akin to, or at least when people say it, it means something akin to treating other people like you would like to be treated or being nice to other people as if they were you, right? But what I talked about in this podcast was that one of the reasons that health and fitness activities or habits or what have you are difficult for us to pursue or difficult for us to maintain or stick to is that we neglect the second part of that phrase, love your neighbor as yourself. What does it mean to love yourself? What does it mean to love yourself really? Because if I say love yourself, it takes on this kind of woo-woo new agey thing. Like you should take more vacations and drink more caramel lattes or get more back rubs or take more Epsom salt baths or something like that. I don't know why I picture that, but that's what I picture. It's a very frou-frou kind of thing. But, but really unpack that, really dig into that, really think about that. What does it mean to love yourself? What does it mean to take care of yourself as if you are somebody worth loving? So think about this in relationship to your kids, right? Because when I ask people, what does it mean to love yourself? You might get some strange answers and... <laughs> Maybe you won't even know what to say, right? But if you ask, what does it mean to love your children? Let's say nutrition, for example. What does it mean to love your children? Does loving your children in their nutrition look like letting them eat whatever they want, whenever they want, as much as they want, at any time of the day, right? Does it mean that? Does loving your children mean no holds barred, everything's wonderful, take all the pleasure in the things that you can take pleasure in and have at Well, no, like a good parent is trying to help their children eat things that are good for them, even if they don't want to. (laughs) 
<laughs> they're they're trying to introduce them to new foods. They're they're working to bring novelty to the situation. They're working to bring discipline to the situation. And no, I'm sorry, no matter how much you would like it, you cannot subsist on Twinkies and chicken nuggets. I know they taste good, kiddo, but that doesn't constitute a healthy diet. Right. What does it mean to love your children with regard to material possessions? Do you just give them everything they want all the time? You walk through the store and you're like, I want that. Yeah, great. I want that. Yeah, okay. I want that. Yeah, okay. Well, no, there's structure and discipline around loving your child with regard to possessions. Maybe they need to earn that thing. Maybe their behavior has been really poor lately and they just really don't eat given the things that they can control in their life, the small, minute things they can control in their life. They don't really deserve a reward. So no, not today. Sorry, kiddo. Or maybe they have a lot of stuff at home and buying something new means they need to be giving something away because there's no reason to accumulate all this stuff, right? There's parameters around loving your children. And when you really dig down into the core of it, it's not just to like be hard on them. It's not to create disciplinary structures or, or whatever. What does a good parent want to do? A good parent wants to treat their child in a way that brings out their fullest potential, that taps into the God-given potential of that individual human being and brings it out of them. It says, hey man, you're made of sterner stuff than you know. You're better than this. You're capable of behaving better than what we just saw. You're more intelligent than this. You're more disciplined than this. You have stuff inside of you that you have no idea about and you can grow. And I'm going to help you do that, even though sometimes that's painful, and even though sometimes it's difficult, and even sometimes it means that you don't get to do what you want to do right in this moment, because it will pay off for you in the future. That's what it means to love her kids. And today when we're talking about the word love, and when I was speaking with that interviewer about why we as individuals don't execute our health and fitness like we know we should. I said at the root of it, we don't know how to love ourselves. That's really at the root of it. Because every single person listening to the sound of my voice right now has a potential. Depending on your religious disposition, it's a God-given potential. It's a thing that, and even if you're not a religious person, biologically speaking, at conception, your DNA came together to be a very unique thing compared to everybody else. We have a lot in common, but we also have a lot of differences, all tied up in that potential that genetic potential. And it's it's literally sitting in the, the every single cell in your body right now. It's right there. Right? What does it mean to love yourself? Well, it means, part of it, means taking really good care to manifest everything that's tied up in every single cell in your body. It might mean that you need to sleep a certain amount of hours in a day. Some of us need more, some of us need less. It might mean that you need to engage in weight training a few days per week. Some of us need more, some of us need less. It might mean that you need some more cardiovascular fitness in your life. Some of us need different modalities than others, right? It might mean that you need to cut down on certain dietary things that you put in your face and you might need to change the way you do things. It might need that you need to introduce a, a fasting discipline or that you might need to introduce some supplements into your life. I know that's a lot of stuff, but the question is, how do we love ourselves well? And here's the root of it. And here's something that really bothers me. And the host and I talked about for a little bit. How are we supposed to love our neighbor as ourself if we haven't even figured out this loving ourself thing yet? I'm not talking about putting ourselves on some, like, glorified pedestal. I'm saying that if we can't practice good love, if we can't recognize that the creation that God made us to be is wonderful and good and deserves to be well taken care of, in 1 Corinthians it says, don't you know, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. Treat yourself that way. If we can't figure that out, how in the world are we supposed to love other people well? How are we supposed to do that? I'll tell you how a lot of us do it. We love other people even better than we love ourselves. And then we get tired, and then we get resentful, and then we get frustrated, angry, and act out in all kinds of weird ways because we feel we deserve better, even though we feel bad about feeling like we deserve better. I'm telling you that from the perspective of the word love, you do deserve better, but good things have already been given to you. What we need to do in loving ourselves is to be good stewards of that, to be good stewards of the gifts that we've been given, to play the best game with the hand we've been dealt. And what's really cool about that is when you start to do that, 
when you start to love yourself enough to get your steps in a day, to love yourself enough to set aside enough time to get good rest, to love yourself enough to eat enough protein, to love yourself enough to curb your alcohol consumption, to love yourself enough not to eat all the garbage in the world that tastes really good but is not good for you. When you start to do that, what's really cool is you start to love other people that way too. And it's not a compulsory thing. It's like, wow, this feels good. This is nice. This is a good way to be. And I want other people to enjoy this as well. I want my kids to eat well and move and rest enough. I want my coworkers to do the same. I want my friends to do the same. Heck, I want my enemies to do the same. Maybe they wouldn't be in such a bad mood all the time <laughs> if they weren't drinking so much garbage, eating garbage, and not getting enough rest. Maybe we wouldn't be enemies at all. That's a big deal. And I would encourage you, and, and I would love to hear your thoughts. What does it mean to love yourself well? Am I off base here, or do I have your attention in this vein? Because I, th I really think this is at the core of why many people don't do what they know they need to do. There's somebody in our community who's wrestling with a pretty intense illness, and they're undergoing medical treatment for this illness. Yet, this individual still smokes half a pack of cigarettes every day. And the studies are actually very well correlated, showing that smoking is a direct causal factor in the disease that this person's fighting. Come on, man. <laughs> Do I have to say that it's worth loving yourself enough to treat yourself even better than the doctors are treating you? And I've said this before, especially when coaching clients, I can't help a client more than they're willing to help themselves. Another way to say that is nobody can love you more then you're willing to love yourself, except for God. Which brings us back to the original point. God made you. All of his creations are good. He made you good. Now the question is, are you going to be able to love yourself well enough to bring that out of you as powerfully as possible in a way that shines a light to the rest of the world, in a way that makes it easier to love your neighbor as yourself, and in a way that sets a great example so that other people are doing the same thing. They're loving themselves well and that translates to loving their neighbor as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Does this resonate with you? How do you love yourself well? Guys, this has been Alex Van Houten with Better Daily. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow for Flex Friday, where we're going to hop in my garage gym and go through an awesome movement to help you in your 1% better journey through exercise. Until next time, guys, remember, it's just 1%. You got this. Thank you for joining us for your 1% Better today. Don't forget to subscribe for the podcast. Leave us a raving review to tell others how Better Daily has helped you in your journey. If you want more Better Daily, download our app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live. Use code POD to get 25% off your subscription. That's P-O-D, all caps, to save 25% on your subscription. We all have a cross to carry. It's later when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.live today.